you know welcome to frappe verse 2024 uh, we are all super Uh, super expi- excited to do this conference so this is the 10th annual conference we started in 2014 with uh, probably 50 people and today we expect uh, you know through the day with the expo and everything uh, maybe 1000 people to show up so it's been a great journey over the last 10 years and uh, yeah it's also you know we uh, so i want to talk about the venue I'm very excited to be here at nehru center um and so if we uh, i mean not many of even lot of indians are not really aware of uh, jawaharlal nehru was independent india's first prime minister and while his political legacy is uh, <laughs> is debatable and it's a, it's a political hot potato but there are a lot of things about nehru that was uh, so this place is inspired by the thoughts of nehru right i mean that was uh you know that's if you go to the website so there is a science center here there is a planetarium um you know we have this amazing auditorium here uh, by murals by one of india's greatest painters uh, m f hussain so uh, you know really iconic when you we have a art gallery there is a discovery of india expo that goes on uh, on the first floor i think one very important thing that nehru did according to me was um, uh you know he laid the foundations of modern india and while uh, you know while india was coming out of its colonial legacy nehru uh, i mean he had a vision for a country that was built on science technology rationality and uh, very modern ideas of liberalism equality and he put the foundations for some of india's biggest technology institutions the indian institute of technology the space research organization the steel pa- plants power plants and uh, so it's quite fitting to have a conference at this venue uh, you know where we are a technology conference we talk about software and technology and uh, so you know very excited to be here at nehru center there's always a dream i mean i grew up in this city in the 80s and the tower here was probably the only tower you could see for <laughs> uh, you know miles out of here and you know now the city is just grown up around this place as well um and talking of technology i think the way we look at our industry today uh, is also that you know, i started writing code uh, in the 90s and uh, you know at that time you know when i uh, when i was in college like java was the 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 thing to do right and uh, around the millenn like around the turn of the millennium you know there was the web we had amazon and uh, google and all these amazing companies come out in the early late 90s early 2000s you know we had the dot com boom and the bubble and web was supposed to be the uh, you know the ultimate thing then you know immediately in like another 5 years 7 years we had social and mobile that came up uh, facebook uh, 2006 7 and i think i think iphone also 2006 7 so again huge technological shift in the way society got structured uh, in that era and i think we are still in the web and mobile era in lot of ways and this um, um and while there have been other waves like you know big data and <laughs> crypto <laughs> and uh, you know we have another bubble you know going on which is ai and it's i think we, my view is like what what machines have done is created insane amount of wealth for society and we live in this society where the uh, technology is no longer about utility it is about entertainment it is about weird things right i mean what i mean we we don't have uses for technology anymore like we make insane we make cat videos and you know we make um uh, you know we come up with dodge coins you know which <laughs> so uh, and ai you know i don't know what ai does you know other than making really bad images but like we don't like we have so much technology so much machines so much wealth but we don't seem to know what to do with it um, so that's where we are in terms of the industry today in terms of open source i think that's the other please ignore the screen uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, open source the techno the industry has come a huge way in the last 10 years right i mean in the 90s open source was all about linux about idealism but today open source is everything right open source is uh, on github there are 400 million repositories as per the last october's report 
and the whole world is really moving in that direction so you know this event and frappe itself is part of the open source movement as well and 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 that is part of the reason why many of you are here right i mean because we <coughs> uh, we we see the value in open source we see that open source creates more value in a way that proprietary software does not i mean even uh, you know even though there is uh, yeah so that's uh, state of open source and frappe itself right you know but uh, in 2014 the community was maybe you know as big as frappe <laughs> and uh, maybe two or three times but today the community is very big uh, and you know we know it on the forums we know it on events uh, this year i have been to several places been to uh, nairobi and dar es salaam and chennai and ahmedabad and uh, at all these places at least 100 people were there so you know there is a really growing global community out there that uh, you know that is much beyond frappe and that also brings us um like we also realize that there is an asymmetry now there is a lot of expectations from what frappe can do and uh, we are also very aware that maybe we may not meet all of your expectations uh, okay <laughs> yeah yeah so you know we may not meet all of your expectations and uh, so that's for me that creates a huge opportunity for everybody here in the community to fill up gaps right i mean uh, this community should not be only frappe there should be like several organizations several leaders among you who uh, can can really take up things fill the gaps look for opportunities to uh, kind of grow this community as well another thing happened this year was frappe cloud for us that uh, and you know we'll have a lot more presentations talking about these things but as a business we became a successful repeatable business right uh, this wasn't there for the last uh, 16 years and and it feels really good to be in a place where we are not uh, where, where we are very confident that the business continues to grow and while the business is also important i don't think that is the biggest driver for the way things happen right and uh, uh, so so today we have like 1000 10000 plus sites on fabric cloud and uh, and you know it's it keeps us going you know it keeps us going we want to do a lot more than that um uh, there is something that uh, that that this year i am also so this year we we as a business we always ask ourselves right i mean what do we really want to do do we want to become a big business no yes right what but this goal somehow seems interesting because to me while it is not a very serious goal but to see whether we can we create a product or an ecosystem that can scale to this level right so that's something that's something i have been trying to focus on and this goal i mean we have taken a goal at least i have taken a goal that in next 5 years we should have 1 million sites it's just for fun it's not a revenue goal it's not we want to do something but it's like can you build a product that kind of goes to a million and that's that's an attractive proposition at least for me at this point the other thing that really excites me is this idea of uh, democratic work and we have like i'm in lot of ways i'm very proud of what we have done as a team over the last year over the last couple of years the last few years as well i think as a small team we punch way above our weight and a lot of this happens because of our core values that uh, you know that drive our organization and democracy is is one of them and i really hope uh, you know even while we talk about uh, community right i mean i hope we set standards for the rest of the community as well you know i hope this kind of ideas of creating a company which where everybody feels that you know they are um you know everybody feels that they have the full freedom to do whatever they want and they are responsible for themselves not their managers has really worked i had given a talk a few years ago about running a company without managers and i had a very different idea back then we had a system called energy points i don't know if anybody remembers that and but that was a completely bad idea and that didn't work this seems to work i don't know in 3 years i may come out with a new <laughs> idea but this is something i'm very excited all our products are built by very small engineering teams and people feel like how can you run a product with uh, so few uh, Uh, you know so few engineers like are you sustainable right i mean we had a partners meet up yesterday and people are worried but i mean these products are young and and you will hear a lot about these products over the next two days 
I think it's just insane the amount of work people have been able to do just because they believe in themselves, they believe in the values of the company, they believe they are in the right place, uh, in the right ecosystem, in the right time. You know, this is the time of their life. You know, I mean, that is what everybody should feel, right? And that is what I think we've been able to achieve to an extent. Maybe there is a long way to go there as well. Uh, going forward, this uh, couple of things that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, I'm always thinking about is like, what kind of company do we become from here? We are not, I mean, we have never been a revenue focused company yet. Uh, and I don't think we want to become that. But what does it mean in terms of growth scale? You know, how do we scale? Like, what are the values that will scale? Like, I mean, will we succumb to this whole idea of capitalism ultimately that, you know, you just make more money and, you know, that's how you climb up the pyramid of society. Uh, that's a very, uh, I know you've heard these problems before, but that's something that I'm constantly worried. Like, I hope we don't end up becoming that company. We end up becoming something else. Uh, and also, you know, before I wrap, you know, what do we want to become as a community? You know, I also want to throw this question to you guys. You know, we are all for-profit companies here, most of, most of you, right, uh, trying to build businesses and trying to be sustainable. Uh, but what is it that really drives this community? Because I believe this community will only grow if it has a certain values that the community will then represent to the rest of the world. And uh, so this, these values, like what are those values, right? I mean, are we about excellence? Are we about doing good quality work? Are we about ethics? Are we about sharing? Are we about, so what do we stand for? So every time we go to a customer or every time we go, uh, you know, somebody reaches out to anybody who is a part of this community. I really hope that we ask these questions. I don't know if we can impose that, but, or I don't know what kind of structures, rules we can create or should we create to uh, implement some of these things. But yeah, I want to leave you guys with this question. And uh, that's it. That was my <laughs> uh, welcome talk. Mm -hmm.